Okay, so uh, uh, under uh, the first topic uh, called history and evolution of quality control and management, I am uh, going to discuss uh, the last or the fifth subtopic, which is uh, titled as serial and concurrent engineering quality related issues in design and manufacturing. Now, before I uh, start uh, explaining these two concepts uh, in product development and how uh, these uh, two concepts are related to uh, the quality engineering or quality management. Okay. Uh, uh, let me uh, make some uh, the remarks like say, you know, almost uh, you will find the 90 percent of the cases even today as far as uh, manufacturing of a product is concerned that means for the product development for the in manufacturing sectors we find uh, uh, that the serial engineering approach is followed okay particularly in indian context you will find now obviously you know this concurrent engineering approach is the latest one and many companies uh, they are trying to move from serial engineering to concurrent engineering okay now, obviously, there are certain uh, advantages in concurrent engineering, but you never assume uh, that the, for the sake of concurrent engineering, you need to move from serial to concurrent engineering. Now, under certain conditions, the so serial engineering is the best one. Under certain other conditions, you have no other alternative but to go for concurrent engineering. So, uh, so it is not that uh, as the serial engineering has uh, has been developed initially and the later on you know we, in many cases many product manufacturers so they have moved to concurrent engineering by hook or by crook we have to go from serial to concurrent engineering okay so obviously you know in a serial serial engineering uh, the you look at the quality issues uh, from one perspective whereas as soon as uh, you uh, move to concurrent engineering, uh, the same quality issues you may have to look into from other perspectives. Okay, all right. Now, so this serial engineering or the concurrent engineering, uh, uh, this is uh, used for product development purpose. And as I have already told you, uh, uh, that uh, what do you uh, what do you do under product development? What are the phases uh, involved? Like say product design, process design, manufacturing, in different forms. Okay, so uh, for product development, either you will opt for serial engineering approach or you will opt for concurrent engineering approach. Okay, now obviously the product development process is the most important process for any company. So, product development process in a company is one of the important activities that is primarily responsible for its long term survival and sustainability in the market. In today's context, you will find that the sustainability is uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, the main objective. It means uh, you have to create a production system, but make sure that this is sustainable. And uh, whenever you talk about uh, the sustainability, there are three aspects of sustainability we are referring to. One is, uh, you know, the economic sustainability. Then we refer to environmental sustainability. And we also refer to social sustainability. Now, in a broad framework, when you talk about, uh, you know, developing uh, the quality systems, now in many a time, what you try to do, that means to what extent the your quality systems which you have developed, it is promoting the causes of sustainability. That is, you have to link it. That means it gone are those days when uh, you think of quality in isolation. You just you cannot do. So, and uh, this framework you have to develop. And one point I like to highlight, like say, you know, we we'll always you try to study these systems. What is the you know uh, the relationship between quality systems uh, uh, with say uh, say the financial systems of a company 
or say you know uh, the economic sustainability or say environmental sustainability and uh, ultimately the social sustainability now if you want to uh, you know the structure uh, uh, this uh, this model or this concept you have to refer to several case studies in fact that means uh, you have to create a database model that means from a company's perspectives from the manufacturer's perspectives the system should be explained from all these three perspectives now so long term survival and sustainability is your goal and in this context what uh, i try to highlight like say essentially uh, for uh, sustaining uh, uh, your activities for sustainability of your organization what you require two important things you must have one is definitely the profitability you make sure that the profitability is guaranteed today as well as tomorrow all time this is the first objective the second objective is obviously as a manufacturer you are producing products you are selling products in the market either it could be if it's a new product it is a new market or uh, you know uh, the existing product in the existing markets so you have created your market and uh, there is uh, the market share for your product so you have to have your market share and the market share should be such that uh, you can uh, uh, maintain you know you get sufficient returns and so that uh, the investment is possible for technology upgradation and the technology upgradation has a very close link with quality improvement is it okay so uh, so whenever you talk about uh, the quality systems we are referring a quality systems with respect to a particular level of technology now whatever uh, uh, say uh, the earnings we have whatever the revenues whatever uh, the net profit you have or say return earnings you have now some part of it you must be able to reinvest for technological upgradation so there is a very close link between technology and the quality okay so uh, so you have to take a very holistic approach and uh, in uh, particularly in the concurrent engineering approach when you apply you take a very holistic approach towards uh, the quality and related issues so entire process of product development consist of several steps to be followed in sequence in traditional approach that means for in a, in a in a sequence that means you will find you know uh, that's the uh, old technique like say someone is uh, designing your product uh, and he is not visible you as uh, as uh, say manufacturer you have just uh, collected the drawing and as per the drawing requirements you have to set up your production systems and you start manufacturing okay so and uh, this design document is considered to be a sacrosanct means you you don't have any authority to change it so uh, that is a formal order you have to produce okay that is uh, means suppose you are the production in charge you are the manufacturing in charge manufacturing engineer you are heading that cell so it is your responsibility you never you will be able to question the design so uh, so the design is over and the design team will never find in, in the shop floor it's clear so that is the traditional approach when the design is over you try to produce the design uh, you try to manufacture the design as per the requirements the design specification sometimes you are successful sometimes you are not so it reflects your performance and accordingly you know uh, uh, you you try to produce and send uh, those produced items to the customers so one by one in a sequence you do and there is as such there is no feedback informations that means the kinds of problems you are you are uh, you are facing whether it maybe it's a it's a it's a design uh, for meeting the design requirements like this sometimes you no know, uh, for uh, you have uh, designed the mating parts and what do you find that uh, that the tolerances are very tight tolerances and uh, the kinds of uh, the traditional manufacturing systems we have you no know, you just cannot produce uh, or you cannot achieve that particular tight tolerance so what do you do obviously you know uh, uh, you try your best but uh, as uh, uh, in certain uh, points in time you fail 
So, okay. So, uh, obviously, this information you feel like uh, giving to the design department. So, that means uh, there must be a feedback information. So, in the traditional approach, when uh, uh, you have no other options, see, you have to produce with respect to, uh, you know, uh, using the traditional manufacturing one. And the new technologies are not coming. So, obviously, you are bound to produce as per the, as per the specifications and alternatives used to be very, very few. Today, what has happened, like say, you have uh, many kinds of designs you may offer, many sorts of technology you can adopt, okay. And similarly, at the manufacturing stage, you know, you have uh, different alternatives. You can uh, go for uh, the traditional manufacturing systems, you can opt for NC based uh, systems, you can go for high level automation or there could be a perfect balance between you use the computers at the production stage, there could be a perfect balance between the human labor, uh, then uh, the use of computer and the automated systems, this is the level of automation. So, there are a lot of uh, the new opportunities coming up and with respect to these opportunities, why don't you, you strengthen your design and while you design something as a designer, you also must look into what kind of facilities the manufacturing system is having, okay. So, when uh, you have these interactions, obviously, you know, uh, uh, this sequence is on. That means, is always, it's, it's not an open loop, it's a closed loop system is becomes. That means, you feel like working in concurrent engineering or simultaneous engineering mode. So, concurrent engineering is also referred to as a simultaneous engineering. That means, while you, you design something, you think about manufacturing in advance, you think about post manufacturing conditions in advance and you try to uh, have a common database where you know this interaction between design and manufacturing is always highlighted and this is to be made formally and that sort of thing we do in a, in a formal you know the concurrent engineering approach okay so and as the time passes you will find that uh, the data uh, you know uh, these files are getting updated and uh, you know, but the current problems are known and immediately, you know, by the response time from uh, say the designers for changing the product design, response time gets reduced and ultimately what happens, it helps in, uh, you know, the developing the product with the minimum time. Now, another important factor is that, okay, the company's objectives are known, the profitability and market shares. Is it okay? Always try to increase this. Okay, so increasing. Now, uh, there must be a backup. That means you have uh, you have created a manufacturing system, and uh, the manufacturing system must promote these two objectives. So, what are the objectives of a manufacturing uh, the setup or say the production system? There are three objectives. The first one is you try to produce the product with the maximum quality. That is objective number one. Second objective is very important. You try to produce the product with the minimum cost. The cost is very, very important. If the cost is less, uh, you know, uh, the sales price will be less. And if the sales price is less, obviously, you know, uh, the demand will be more and you will be producing more and your revenue will be more and ultimately, you know, your, uh, you know, the gross profit as well as the net profit will be more. Is it okay? So, that is key. So, that is the second objective. You produce with the minimum production cost. And the third objective is also very important. Uh, that is uh, uh, linked with the total production cost definitely. That is, you know, from start to finish, you start uh, designing the product and you end up with uh, selling the product. Okay. Even for the consumer product, even for, you know, uh, say the industrial product you have some other steps like you install the product if you if you produce if you design if you manufacture an industrial product so uh, these are specific requirements for a company and uh, as per the specific company orders with the specifications you try to produce it now so the total time you you uh, engage yourself for developing the product it should be as minimum as possible so the development time uh, is closely linked with the development cost. 
so you try to reduce it so that is the third objective that means first objective is maximization of the quality second objective is minimization of the cost and the third objective is reduction of say the product you know uh, the manufacturing throughput time so this is basically the total throughput time so the total throughput time means essentially say uh, you suppose you produce uh, in uh, in a manufacturing systems there are some say uh, eight or say the nine stages one after another in a sequence okay now the starting time of the first unit at stage 1 and uh, ending time of the last unit that means the nth unit from the last stage so this is the total throughput time now this throughput time you must have control on the throughput time now this throughput time will have four components one is the setup second one is the actual processing time the third one is the waiting time and the fourth one is basically the transport time now what do we have observed if you uh, deal with the company's data related to the throughput time you will find the almost 65 to 80% of the time you spend on uh, say the waiting or the queuing as well as transferring uh, you know uh, the semi finished items from one stage to another so these are essentially absolutely you know the non value adding activities so what is even uh, the setup is essentially non value adding activity so what do you try to do that means you try to reduce it now how to do that obviously many things you have to do simultaneously that means when you produce something at a particular stage i know this uh, semi finished uh, item from your process it will go to the next process whether you are sending it in the right conditions the right quality or not if you just send it uh, you know uh, some uh, the scrap or say the defective item to the next stage obviously you know uh, the next stage uh, will be will not be able to uh, do any work so it will be stalled it will act as a bottleneck okay so these are the things to be considered that means many aspects you need to consider simultaneously and at any point in time you will be able to you know uh, you know the relate your design with manufacturing related to design there could be many design options similarly related to manufacturing there could be different manufacturing alternatives it could be traditional it could be non traditional it could be you know uh, different types of machineries so all are uh, you know the all combinations are feasible for which combination you get the maximum you know the quality minimum cost and minimum throughput so these exercise routinely religiously you carry out in a concurrent engineering approach later on you know uh, there there are many uh, you know the mathematical modeling is possible so uh, we'll definitely refer to those mathematical models uh, you know indicating the kinds of relationships you have between design and manufacturing now in a traditional uh, the approach like say serial engineering approach you know uh, this is just a simple guess is it okay it is someone's uh, just opinion there will be a lot of vagueness in establishing the relationship between say uh, say the design and engineering that means to what extent design is uh, is uh, instrumental in getting the quality to what extent the design is instrumental in in uh, in the in the total production cost and to what extent design is responsible for reduction on non reduction of the manufacturing throughput time is it okay so this is the basis i could explain now this process typically requires that the persons involved may be able to communicate freely and effectively this is very very important among themselves among themselves regarding such matters as data collection problem solving and suggestions for improvement in products processes and manufacturing okay so this is very very important in fact that means the persons uh, that means a team is to be formed and the team members must have adequate authority and responsibility in dealing with all these aspects okay so obviously you know the knowledge base you must have that means uh, we are uh, related to a particular design what sort of knowledge base you have 
related to manufacturing what sort of knowledge base you have that is very very important and you also must be aware of what are the the new technologies coming new materials uh, you know you can use okay so and uh, uh, as a designer you also must have uh, you know the knowledge adequate knowledge in the product design as well as the process design similarly as a manufacturer yes your uh, uh, primary concern is manufacturing manufacturing related knowledge base you have definitely but simultaneously you have to have a, a knowledge base in uh, uh, in design also is it okay so it's a, it's a team and uh, unless you have a team approach because uh, you know the whole uh, uh, the product in most majority of the products they are becoming very complex in nature is it okay you need uh, the knowledge in mechanical engineering electrical engineering instrumentation computer all in one product so obviously and uh, there will be there is miniaturization in the design okay and the uh, automation these are all there so that's why you know a team formation is a must okay so the main objective in product uh, uh, while you suggest this uh, these approaches for product development the main objective is to improve communication between the manufacturing the top management group the designers this is very very important gone are those days when the you know the designers uh, they used to live in their own world and they used to hardly you know inter uh, mix with uh, other persons in the organizations so uh, so that attitude will not help so the suppliers and the customers on a continuous basis this is very very important because uh, you know ultimately the product quality is very much depend depends on uh, in the quality of the supplied items because uh, if you uh, look at the bill of materials or the product structure code of a particular uh, of a particular product what do you find that uh, in majority of the cases like say 40 to 70% of the items listed in the bill of material these are to be procured from outside so obviously your uh, the supply base uh, should be very very strong and so the suppliers uh, so ultimately the quality of the final product is very much dependent on uh, the quality of the parts or the components or the raw materials which you get from different suppliers and obviously the customers uh, view point is to be constantly you know uh, more, you know which to be you create a system where uh, the customers requirements are constantly you uh, you you will come to know and you update this uh, this document to become successful in product development in the long term the company is required to establish a collaborative and multidisciplinary approach for product development this is the key means today that point i was highlighting that is essentially is a multidisciplinary approach and while you form the team for product development in concurrent engineering approach you go for you know uh, uh, you need to consider several sorts of disciplines the requirements of several or uh, the demand from several disciplines simultaneously so this is the key and uh, in today's business environment a number of tools techniques and methodologies may be quite useful in design and development of the products okay so a few important methodologies and tools that are being widely used by many companies are one is the product development team sometimes these are referred to as there could be you know the nominal group technique uh, you know uh, you can use ngt sessions also the product development team you have to form okay sometimes you know by it is referred to as the project team also because the first time you know you want to develop a product or the process concurrent or simultaneous engineering you have to apply there is no other alternative in many many cases but make sure that uh, you have created the environment and uh, so that in such a way that the concurrent and the simultaneous engineering this is a feasible technique it's not that you know the suddenly you take a decision and you go for simultaneous or, or concurrent engineering approach this is not possible so you have to create environment certain necessary conditions you have to fulfill computer aided design or the cad you use computer aided engineering also you use 
and computer aided manufacturing you are all aware of and the virtual reality this is at the prototype stage is a design uh, the perfection from when the several conditions you want to test it so obviously uh, virtual reality kinds of systems or the software you may use the traditional product development is called a serial engineering approach this is uh, initial design then you go for verification and then you go for prototyping and uh, okay so prototyping and then uh, once the detailed design is over after uh, you make the prototype you go for review for manufacturing test quality and service that means essentially on the prototype you do lot of experimentation and you check whether it is manufacturable whether it is testable whether the quality is uh, you can maintain and whether it is serviceable once you do this then obviously you know uh, there will be a lot of uh, the changes means when you go for review always in the first time when uh, you get the design it may not be the perfect so always an improvement is required so that's why improvement in the design that's why you go for redesign for manufacturing testing quality and service so these are the four issues in the traditional you know uh, uh, the serial engineering approach we focus on that means uh, uh, the manufacturability testability quality and serviceability again you go for re verify this is the process then you produce and uh, then you go for the final testing so this is the approach one after another you do so important objectives of an organization one is i have already mentioned the profitability and market share of the products and uh, i have already discussed this point while you develop a product these are the key points you should always uh, keep in mind that the product development process must ensure maximum quality minimum cost and minimum product development time that means what i have mentioned that is manufacturing throughput time so in this context the alternative concurrent or simultaneous engineering approach for product development is recommended in many instances and well, this is an acceptable practice for many many world world renowned organizations okay or the product manufacturers this ensures achievement of maximum quality minimum cost and minimum product development time if you go through uh, many case studies you will find that uh, Uh, unless and until you adopt simultaneous engineering approach these three uh, objectives simultaneously you may not be able to fulfill there are many such cases so the main advantage is knowing the relationship between design and manufacturing this point already i have highlighted now in the concurrent or simultaneous engineering uh, what do we try to achieve we try to improve the process of developing a product that is the most important point to be noted in plain and simple terms this means that uh, concurrent engineering concept helps develop a product through simultaneous working on several aspects issues and functions as assigned at the same time such that the product development time gets shortened so this is your key unless the product development time gets shortened you cannot afford the product to your uh, you know the customer base quickly if you take long time then the other your competitors will beat you and they will take your market so with the use of concurrent engineering concepts benefits in the form of reduced direct labor costs direct labor cost life cycle time inventory scrap rework and engineering changes are realized that means i have already uh, referred to you know the prevention based quality control versus detection based quality control obviously when you believe in the concept of concurrent engineering approach that concept in the concept of concurrent engineering approach obviously we will be working in the prevention based quality control mode so this is the concurrent or concurrent or simultaneous engineering based uh, product development process like during the design and verify these two stages design and verify what do you try to do you look into six aspects first is the performance of the product testability manufacturability 
service or serviceability, cost aspect and quality and this is a closed loop you know uh, constantly develop. But the manufacturing team as well as uh, you know uh, the design team they must uh, work together they form a team. So constantly you know both the parties they form a team and this team is experimented with this and ultimately you get a best possible design which is manufacturable with minimum cost with minimum development time with an assuring maximum quality and this you review and then you give uh, clear cut instructions for production and after you produce you know obviously there will be final testing is it okay as per uh, you know the requirements uh, from a particular product okay so this is uh, so this is essentially uh, this uh, the diagram or this figure essentially explains all the you know uh, the way a concurrent engineering approach is being followed okay so this is one so over the years Concurrent simultaneous engineering approach has proved to be a valuable tool for designing competitive products in a changing and expanding world market. Okay, so uh, these days, what we say that I have already mentioned that uh, uh, in the value of a product, which is closely linked with the quality, you have a most important uh, value component that is called exchange value. So. If you want to uh, have the best possible exchange value for your product, obviously you have no other alternative but to go for exporting your product so that it becomes uh, an internationally renowned product. Is it okay? So, uh, so expanding world market, so it'll give you a lot of opportunities. So obviously you have to, uh, you know, uh, uh, produce something with a minimum time, maximum quality, minimum cost. Is it okay? and uh, you have to offer this product as quickly as possible. It is reported that the Japanese companies take almost half of the time that a typical US company takes to launch new products in the market. So these days we talk about uh, the new product development NPD. Okay, so whenever we take up uh, a project on new product development, as far as possible, we should adopt the philosophy of concurrent engineering. This success is due to the fact that the concurrent engineering has contributed to a significant reduction in the product development time. So, what are the quality related issues to be considered in the product development process? First one is while you go for concurrent engineering approach or while you go for offline quality control approach along with the online quality control approach, the dimensions like reliability, these are the, the dimensions of quality reliability, maintainability, etc. are considered. Dimensions like manufacturability, process settings are considered. All these issues are considered simultaneously. Okay, that means you must have, you can have the best possible balance or the trade-off. Performance of the product highlighted always because you will come to know and that is the main dimension. Servicing and warranty of the products can more scientifically determine. This is uh, the point to be noted that the warranty of the product, like say the warranty of pacemaker or say warranty of uh, say the bathroom geyser. There are many items for which you provide warranty. Other items you uh, go for consumer items, you may go for the guarantee. So the warranty you need to determine. Okay, so and warranty actually uh, represents uh, uh, the level of quality. Okay, as well as the reliability. So, design level versus I will conclude by referring to one concept that is for a particular product you may offer different design levels and uh, against each particular design level you may have a corresponding value and the cost simultaneously. So, how do you select a design level? So, this is usually if you get the data and uh, through case studies this sort of uh, you know the relationships you will get like on the y axis you have cost or the value and on the x axis you have the design quality level now in this case there are four design levels offered four types of designs four alternatives a b c and d now the question is considering these characteristics one is the cost characteristic and the second one is the value characteristics which design will opt for whether it is A, B, C or D. 
is it okay so the value it uh, it uh, it at certain point in time okay it it saturates okay or against a particular design level because a is the original design b is the improved design this is the third improved design second improved design and d is the latest design now even in the latest design there is hardly any a change in the value uh, in the value of c and uh, in the value of d uh, with respect to value of c okay whereas the value of b is significantly less so also the value of a so but the cost uh, increases at an exponential rate as uh, the design level increases so my question is that uh, how do you select uh, the design level okay and uh, as per the design level now you go for manufacturing you apply uh, you know the concurrent engineering approach so how do you select the design level for a product is a very crucial you know very important question in fact there are many alternatives available and for which design level you will go for concurrent engineering approach so it is selected based on the difference between value and cost that means here maybe for the a the difference is uh, less whereas for the design b uh, the difference is maximum getting my point means the value minus cost it should be positive is you don't go for say the cost minus value like if you have so the cost is very high the value is less so uh, it should be positive value minus cost so obviously you may opt for design b okay so i close this session thank you